சென்றுள்ள Once upon a time a girl named Cinderella lived with her stepmother and two step sisters Poor Cinderella had to work hard all day long so the others could rest It was she who had to wake up each morning when it was still dark and called to start the fire It was she who cooked the meals It was she who kept the fire going The poor girl could not stay clean from all the ashes and cinders by the fire. What a mess! Her two step sisters laughed, and that is why they called her Cinderella. One day big news came to town the king and queen were going to have a ball it was time for the prince to find a bride all of the young ladies in the land were invited to come they were wild with joy they would wear their most beautiful gown and fix their hair extra nice maybe the prince would like them At Cinderella's house she now had extra work to do. She had to make two brand new gowns for her step sisters. Faster! shouted one step sister. You call that a dress? screamed the other. Oh dear! said Cinderella. When can I? The stepmother marched into the room. When can you watch? Well, said the girl, when will I have time to make my own dress for the ball? You, elder the stepmother, who said you were going to the ball? What a laugh, said one stepsister. Such a mess. He pointed at Cinderella all of them laughed Cinderella said to herself when they look at me maybe they see a mess but i am not that way and if i could i would go to the ball so the time came for the stepmother and step sisters to leave for the big party The fine carriage came to the door. The stepmother and step sisters hopped inside, and they were off. Goodbye, called Cinderella. Have a good time. But her stepmother and step sisters did not turn around to see her. Ah, me," said Cinderella sadly. The carriage rolled down the street. She said aloud. I wish I could go to the ball too. Then poof. All of a sudden in front of her was a fairy. You called? said the fairy. Did I? said Cinderella. Who are you? Why? Your fairy godmother, of course. I know you were wish and I have come to grant it but said Cinderella my wish is impossible excuse me said the fairy godmother in a huff did i not just show up out of thin air yes you did said Cinderella then let me be the arm to see what is possible or not Well, I think you know I want to go to the ball too. She looked down at her dirty clothes. But look at me. You do look
took a bit of a mess, child, said the fairy godmother. Even if I had something nice to wear, said the girl, I would have no way to get there. Dear me, all of that is possible, said the fairy. With that, she tapped her wand on Cinderella's head. At once, Cinderella was all clean. She was dressed in a beautiful blue gown. Her hair was set up high on her head inside a golden band. This is wonderful, said Cinderella. Who said I was done, said the fairy. Godmother, she tapped her wand again. At once, a beautiful carriage came to be with a driver and four white horses. Am I dreaming? said Cinderella, looking around her. It is as real, as real can be, said the fairy. Godmother, but there is one thing you must know. What is that? All of this lasts only to midnight. Tonight, at the stroke of midnight, it will all be over. Everything will go back to how it was before. Then I must be sure to leave the ball before midnight, said Cinderella. Good idea, said the fairy godmother. She stepped back. My work is done. And with that, the fairy godmother was gone. Cinderella looked around her. Did that even happen? But there she stood in a fine gown and with a golden band in her hair. And there were her driver and four horses before her waiting. Coming, called the driver. She stepped into the carriage and they were off. Over at the ball, the prince did not know what to think. Why do you have that sad look on your face? The king said to her son, look around you. You could not ask for finer maidens than these. I know, mother, said the prince. If he knew something was wrong, he had met many of the young women. And after he said hello one by one, he could find nothing more to say. Look, someone pointed to the front door. Who is that? All heads turned. Who was the lovely maiden stepping down the stairs? She held her head tall and looked as if she belonged, but no one knew her. There is something about her, said the prince to himself. I will ask her to dance. And he walked over to Cinderella. Have we met? said the prince. I'm pleased to meet you now, said Cinderella with a bow. I feel as if I know you, said the prince. But of course that is impossible. Many things are possible, said Cinderella, if you wish them to be true. The prince felt a leap in his heart. He and Cinderella danced. When the song was over, they danced again. And then they danced again and ate again. Soon the other maidens at the ball grew jealous. Why is he dancing all the time with her? They said. How rude! But all the prince could see was Cinderella 
they laughed and talked and they danced some more in fact they danced for so long that cinderella did not see the clock dong said the clock cinderella looked up dong went the clock again she looked up again oh my she cried out it is almost midnight dong rang the clock why does that matter said the prince dong called the clock i must go said cinderella dong went the clock but we just met said the prince why leave now dong rang the clock I must go said Cinderella she ran to the steps Bang said the clock I cannot hear you said the prince the clock is too loud bang rock the clock Goodbye said Cinderella up up the stairs she ran down went the clock please stop for a moment said the prince oh dear she said as one glass slipper fell off her foot on the stair but Cinderella kept running up Dong said the clock please wait a moment said the prince dong rang the clock goodbye cinderella turned one last time then she rushed out the door dong the clock was quiet it was midnight wait called the prince he picked up her glass slipper and rushed out the door he looked around but could not see her blue dress anywhere This is all I have left from her he said looking down at the glass slipper he saw that it was made in a special way to fit a fool like none other somewhere there is the other glass slipper he said and when i find it i will find her too then i will ask her to be my bride from heart to heart from house to house went the prince one young woman after another tried to fit her foot inside the glass slipper but none could fit and so the prince moved on at last the prince came to cinderella's house he's coming called one step sister as she looked out the window at the door screamed the other step sister kick and the step mother get ready one of you must be the one to fit your foot in that slipper no matter what the prince knocked the step mother flew open the door come in she said I have two lovely daughters for you to see. The first step sister tried to place her foot in the glass slipper. She tried hard, but it just would not fit. Then the second step sister tried to fit her foot inside. She tried and tried with all her might too, but no dice. Are there no other Ang woman in the house said the prince none said the stepmother then i must go said the prince maybe there is one more said cinderella stepping into the room 
I thought you said there were no other young women here, said the prince. None who matter, said the stepmother in a hiss. Come here, said the prince. Cinderella stepped up to him. The prince got down on one knee and tried the glass slipper on her foot. It fit perfectly. Then from her pocket, Cinderella took out something. It was the other glass slipper. I knew it. He cried. You are the one. What? shouted his stepsister. Not her screamed the other stepsister. This cannot be, held the stepmother. But it was too late. The prince knew that Cinderella was the one. He looked into her eyes. He did not see the cinders in her hair or the ashes on her face. I have found you, he said, and I have found you, said Cinderella. And so Cinderella and the prince were married and they lived happily ever after.